Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the next in our series of uh, My Chosen Verses, or My Chosen Verse, for the Public Quran Campaign. Uh, an effort to get the Quran into the conversation of everyone uh, and to make it into the public domain. Um, so uh, today our guest is Ahmed Thompson, who is uh, was born in Zambia, uh, where he spent the first 16 years of his life. After receiving his formal education, uh, in Zimbabwe and England, he accepted Islam in 1973 at the hands of Raja Al Mahmudabad, uh, alayhi rahma, the first director of Regent's Park Mosque, who gave him his Muslim name. Ahmed sub subsequently went on Hajj in 1977, 2001, and in 2018. The author and co -author, author of several books, he currently practices as a barrister specializing in charities, employment, discrimination, and Islamic law. You'll find his website linked in the description of the video, inshallah. So uh, I will, without any further ado, I will hand it over to Brother Ahmed and uh, he can tell us about his chosen verse. Fine, thank you very much, Laman. Um, I, before I actually tell you what my main verse is, I just wanted actually to read out a hadith um, that's reported by at tamir Tirmidhi because um, it speaks about what the Quran is. And of course, when you realize how vast it is, it's very difficult just to pick on one ayah. And from moment to moment in your, in your day, you know, different ayats will come to the heart. Uh, but certainly I think we all have our, our favorites. But the, the hadith I wanted to read out is, is this. It has been related by Tirmidhi that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and grant him peace said, Allah sent down this Quran to command and prevent and as a sunnah to be followed and a parable. It contains your history, information about what came before you, news about what will come after you, and correct judgment between you. Repetition does not wear it out, and its wonders do not end. It is the truth. It is not a jest. Whoever recites it speaks the truth. Whoever judges by it is just. Whoever argues by it wins. Whoever divides by it is equitable. Whoever acts by it is rewarded. Whoever clings to it is guided to a straight path. Allah will misguide whoever seeks guidance from other than it. Allah will destroy whoever judges by other than it. It is the wise remembrance, the clear light, the straight path, the firm rope of Allah, and the useful healing. It is a protection for the one who clings to it, and a rescue for the one who follows it. It is not crooked, and so puts things straight. It does not, it does not deviate so as to be blamed. Its wonders do not cease. It does not wear out with much repetition. And certainly <clears throat> the ayah that I'm going to mention, um, I think attracts me because when I accepted Islam, which was many years ago now, um, I gradually obviously dived in and then began to find out what it was that I'd landed myself in and never regretted it, I hasten to add. But what interested me was um, you know, with reference to the Hadith Jibreel, that, you know, what, what, what Islam is, is straightforward, it's about action. And what Iman is, is also straightforward, it's about what is in the unseen. And, and one begins to believe it until one sees it. So, so there's a state that, you know, stage of, of certainty that one goes through. But what interested me was, was Hassan, uh, which said to Jibreel told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi it is to worship Allah as though you see him, and though you do not see him, you know that he sees you. And this was something that intrigued me because I'd been brought up as a Christian and I had this kind of, kind of usual kind of idea that um, somehow, you know, God created the universe and then left us to get on with it. Uh, and being brought up as a Christian, he was somehow very distant from everyday life. Um, but certainly in the Quran, as, as one, put into action the outward acts of, of worship, and then um, Iman began to grow in the heart, uh, one became aware of Hassan. And I remember particularly um, after I, you know, several months really that I'd been Muslim, uh, I, I was praying Dhuha and I, I kind of learned to do the prayer and I was doing it in a parrot fashion kind of way and gradually beginning to repeat what I'd learned in the Arabic. Um, but suddenly in Sajda, in this one particular prayer, I suddenly was aware that I was in the presence of Allah. And this was a big impact on the heart. You know, that's something I'd never experienced before, really. 
but I realized in that in that sajja that Allah was present. And 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 this was the first inkling, if you like, um, of Ihsan. That you know Allah is not distant. You know, he says in the Quran that Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein. So I mean your jugular vein is uh, it's pretty close, but how, what is closer than that? And, and this indicates, again, the presence of Allah. And then you begin to reflect, what is the presence of Allah? What, how, how does it work? And so the ayah that, that has always um, been read, ready on my tongue and in my heart is this one, from uh, Surah Ashura Council. Uh, it's the 19th ayah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Allahu latifum bi-ibadih Ya'azakum an yasha'u wa huwa al-kari al-aziz and this is um, translated by in, in the uh, Bewley translation, which I find very helpful because it's not a kind of Christian kind of English. It's a very direct and, and up-to-date English. Uh, and their translation is Allah is very gentle with his slaves. That's Latifun bi'ibadi. He provides for anyone he wills. He is the most strong, the almighty. And here... You know, the Latif, you know, Latif is such an interesting name of Allah because it has many translations. It's one of those words which is very difficult to translate with one word. It's also often translated as, as the, uh, the subtly present, the all-pervading, the gently gracious. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it indicates someone who's very intimate um, with knowledge of his creation uh, and therefore he's in a position, therefore, to provide for his creation. Uh, and this is all in, in this ayah, you know, that, that's, so when it, it's more than just being gentle, it, it's being ever present, if you like, it's being right closer to you than your jugular vein, and, and therefore being aware of exactly what your needs are when he provides for you. And, and we often find that he, in other ayats, that the Latif is, is, is joined, here it's joined with Qawiyul Aziz, you know, power, and, and strength used with gentleness, but, but it's also often joined with al-khabir. And al-khabir is usually translated as the one who is the knower of every separate thing that befalls you. He, the one who knows things from the inside out, not from the outside in. So it, it's, it's the one who is within and therefore knows everything. And that withinness is, is the, what the Latif is concerned with. And, and, and this is, something that is beyond our conception. So in another of my favorite ayats is this one from Surah Al-Anam, Livestock, 103, the 103rd ayah. I Eyesight cannot perceive him, but he perceives eyesight. It's sometimes translated as vision. Vision cannot contain him but he contains vision. That's an alternative translation. He is the all-penetrating, the all-aware. So here, a Latif is translated as all-penetrating, the all-aware, Khabir. And then an another ayah which throws light on this is from Surah Al-Mulk, the kingdom, um, ayahs 13 to 14. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأصير كولكم أو وجهار به إنه وليم بذات الصدور ألا يلم من حلق وهو اللطيف الخبير. Whether you keep your words secret or say them out loud, he knows what the heart contains. Does he who created not then know? He is the all-pervading, the all-aware. So here. Again, it's Latif al-Khabir. And the, the other ayat, which is, I've already referred to, is, is in Surah Al-Qaf, the 16th ayat. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim wa laqad halakna l-insana wa nallamu ma tu waswisu bihi nafsuhu wa nahnu akrabu ilayhi min habli al-wareed. We created man and we know what his own self whispers to him. We are nearer to him than his jugular vein. So this is this incredible kind of penetrating presence and therefore knowledge of Allah, of all of his creation, including us. He knows 
what our self says to us in our heart. You know, he knows what the hearts contain. Um, even if we don't express it, he still knows it. If we do express it, he knows it. Uh, and this is an extraordinary knowledge. And, and this is what then makes sense of that statement that he's closer to you, closer than your jugular vein. Somehow, you know, Allah, Allah cannot be contained by any of his creation, but he pervades all of it. And it's something that uh, the Prophet said وسلم, in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah on the lips of the Prophet وسلم, said, um, the heavens and the earth cannot contain me, but the heart of the mu'min contains me. So this then is the, the house of Allah, your heart is the house of Allah, it's the hidden house of Allah. You know, we go on Hajj and we go to Mecca and, and we see the Kaaba and this is the house of Allah. But also we carry the house of Allah within our hearts. Uh, and this in fact is the meaning of, of the turning of, of the whirling dervishes because when you go to Mecca, what do you do? You do tawaf of the house. And the people who do turning, they do tawaf of the, of, of the house in their heart. That's what they're doing. <laughs> That's the meaning of it. Which is which is beautiful, you know. And suddenly, sometimes it's very majestic to watch. But you often wonder, well, why are they doing it? You know, what's the point of it? But this is it. It's a very exalted form of dhikr of Allah, in fact. So I think th this is also coming back to the to the main ayah: Allahu latifun bi ibadihi yazuku ma yasha wa hu al kawi al aziz. This is um, very reassuring. Uh, people often say, you know, if you have anxiety about your provision, then recite this ayah, remind yourself that Allah knows your condition, your situation, your position exactly. And, and we know from the hadith that in fact, you know, even before we're born, you know, after 16 weeks of, of pregnancy, uh, the ruh has breathed into the fetus and the angels write then your risk for the whole of your life and whether, you know, what kind of a life you're going to have, you know, whether you'll be joyful or sad whether you'll be for the fire or the garden, all of these things are preordained even while you're still in your mother's stomach and even before the fetus is fully formed. And, and, and they say that when that happens, when the ruh is breathed into the fetus, that's when the child starts kicking. You know, that's, that's when the mother says, well, I, you know, he kicked, you know, he's alive, he's in there. Um, you know, this is when that awareness comes. Um, so although we know that, once we come out into the world and... Uh, we're faced with all the trials and tribulations that come. Uh, all of us have times when we're anxious about our provision, you know, whether it's my next meal or the next month's rent or will I be able, ever to be able to go and hajj, you know, all of these things that you people worry about. And, and, and this ayah is very reassuring that Allah is very intimate. He knows everything. And he's very latif with it. He's not only knows it in a very subtle way, but also he is very gentle, even though he is Awi and Aziz, even though he's very powerful, you know, that no one can repel his power uh, and his will. Uh, he is at the same time Al Aziz, who is the one who uses strength with gentleness. Uh, and as I said here, the, the, the beauty is translated as, as being gentle with his slaves, latif and bi So, um, this is very reassuring. And, and, and certainly, um, you know, whatever our need, Allah knows it. And, and it's almost embarrassing to ask Allah to, to, to fulfill a need because he already knows it. So you think, well, why am I asking if he already knows? But in fact, the Prophet said, Salah, and that Allah likes to hear his slaves calling on him and, and knocking on his door and shaking his palm trees. So we do all of these things. But it's done with the firmness and with a certainty that Allah will provide. And, and as one teacher said to me, you know, I can guarantee you will eat until you die. <laughs> <laughs> that which is very true. <laughs> so um, I think this is why th this uh, ayah is, 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 I like it so much. Um, and, and it has so many meanings. And the other ayahs I've referred to also um, shed light on its meaning. Because as I said, the, the Latif is something that you can't really sum up in a word. Mm -hmm. It's something in a way that you have to be gradually become more and more aware of. Just in the same way that when you're praying, if you're doing the prayer properly, you will become increasingly aware that you are in the presence of Allah. And, and that in the end will become so strong 
that even when you're not doing the prayer, you'll still be aware that you're in the presence of Allah. And, and, and this is very important because that affects then how you behave. And it's almost like you're going through your, your hisab on the Yawm al -Qiyama. You're doing it as you live your life uh, because you're aware, yes, this is what I'm presenting to Allah on the Qiyama, but I'm doing it now. And, and, and this is the protection in that. that. That's, in a way, is one of the means of taqwa. So, so it's, it's, it's a, an ayah that shines out and, and illuminates and, and helps you to grab hold of the rest of the Quran as well, which, you know, is a, as the Prophet said, it's, it's a, a well from which every time you draw a drink, it's a different drink. And even the same ayah, you'll recite it one day and it'll mean one thing and another day it'll mean another, although they'll be all connected meanings. But this is the vastness of the Quran and the Prophet said, you know, every ayah has three levels of meaning, the outward and the inward and the araf, which if you like is a Gnostic meaning. It's a, you know, the, the heart of heart meaning. So, so even when we read the ayah, it's always helpful to reflect on these three levels of meaning or these three aspects of meaning, because they're not levels, they're not, it's not like a three-story house, but different aspects of, of meaning. And some people compare it to the nut. You know, they say some people, all they get is, is the kernel. And, and some people crush the kernel and they get the nut inside. And then some crush the nut inside and, and get its oil, get its essence. So really the Quran is so beautiful. It's so wonderful. Alhamdulillah. What a gift. And, and when people say it's the greatest miracle that was ever given to the Prophet, sometimes people don't realize what a great gift it is until you think about it. Indeed, and it's a, it pays dividends to, to reflect in, in this way about the, the, the verses in the Quran. Um, it's, it's, I've often uh, noticed, uh, and people don't spend enough time on thinking about how uh, the, a number of verses, many, many verses throughout the Quran, end with the descriptions of Allah, and in this case, Qawwi or Aziz, is, it's, it's very important because it always has a real relevance to the, the preceding uh, phrases, you know, and and in this case, I think that the, the, the it seems that the, um, the 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 main implication of Latif I've always felt is, is about being subtle, and, and you say gentle and subtle, and it's about knowing knowing Latif of Kabir is, is, is experienced, uh, know exactly what to do, like an exact surgeon, he knows exactly how to mm. do and how mm. much to do, and sometimes but from the inside out, not from the outside in. Yes. Yeah, I mean the, the the surgeon has to cut you open. Yes, <laughs> he's, he's dissected bodies before, so he knows what he's doing. Hopefully, well, it's, it's but, a, but Allah's yeah. present in the inside before it's got open. Yes, so is that 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 issue, the, the issue we sometimes have when we worry about you know when you know, about provision. We're talking about worrying about provision. This is uh, it's kind of a common thing. I mean, the, we talked. I talked about this, about this earlier uh, in the family about. Uh, you know, how, how uh, people were so afraid of their provision that they would even kill their infant children in pre-Islamic times mm. and so on. And, and Allah is many times referring to, you know, don't worry, Allah will provide for you in ways you never thought of and, and, and so on. And this, this is like responding, I think. It would be very interesting to look at the context also. And take a verse like this and you kind of just expand to what's the context of the previous verses and after. Mm. But it's about this idea that you think, oh, God isn't doing enough, all right? I want, it's not, you know, he's, he, he's not helping me as much as I want to be helped. You know, I, I make dua for more and more. And, and, but Allah says, you know, he's giving you this and he knows what he's doing and he's doing it in a very careful way, very measured, very subtle, very precise. And he is certainly powerful enough to do whatever he wants. So mm -hmm. it's like the, the Kawil Aziz is, is, is this thing about he has more than enough strength to do whatever he wants, but he's choosing deliberately to give a little less perhaps than you want because he mm. knows and he's experienced and he's the thief and, and it's to reassure people that we can sometimes worry about you know uh, you know I, I want more assurance I want more safety I want more certainty of my risk I want more whatever's going on in life I don't want to worry and you Allah is reassuring by saying he knows what he's doing and he could do more if he wanted <laughs> And also, it enables you to, to learn sabr, to learn patience. Oh, yeah. Because there's, there's two kinds of patience. There's a patience when you're, in fact, very impatient. You say, well, no, I must be patient. And then, then there's a time when you're completely patient because you know everything will be fulfilled in its time. 
And, 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 and I, I mean, it's, it's interesting just as, as you referred that how you approach knowledge of Allah through his names. And, and, and it's a very good discipline, in fact, just, just to look at one name a day and reflect on it, and recite it, you know, and, and, and then see what the meanings are, because this is how you approach knowledge of Allah. You can't know the essence of Allah, but you can know his names and attributes, and then you can see them manifest in what happens in creation. And, and I know, you know one person said to me that the, the methyl of Allah's mercy is the snow because it covers everything. And the methyl of his latif is it's like the mist which you feel in the marrow of your bones. You know, you can't hold it and put it in your pocket, but you feel it in the marrow of your bones. When you walk out on that cold morning, you feel it right through you. And that's a kind of indication again. I often said it's a bit like radioactivity. You know, when, when, when you go to Chernobyl, everything is radiated with radioactivity, but then in fact, even the radiation is permeated with the Latif of Allah. So it's even more subtle than that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, it's so subtle, you can't grasp it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice reflection on, on, uh, on these verses. The, 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 what I, I found is, is this often, you, you don't, if you don't think about it, you, you see that there's many, as I said, many verses where it ends with a couple of names of Allah. And it, it always, I think it's, it's fundamentally related to an ethic of, we often talk about the golden rule, okay? It was a do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which you talked about. But the, ethic, the ethics, the core of ethics really in Islam is you are, you are kind and merciful to others so that Allah is kind and merciful to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is a very important kind of concept. So whenever Allah is mentioning his name, it's about, you know, aware that Allah could do to you what you're doing to others. <laughs> so if, yeah. you're, if you're being cruel to others, then Allah will remind you that I am perfectly capable of being cruel to you. <laughs> you, know, if, you, if, you if you misbehave, if you do something very bad, you know, their, their vengeance is perfectly well vested with me. And I, I can, as, as, as the Prophet said, that you're, you're not a Muslim until you want for your brother what you want for yourself. Yeah. But then he said, you're not a woman, which is a higher station, you're not a woman until you prefer for your brother or sister, what you want for yourself. So, so that was always manifest with the Sahaba, you know, that famous uh, account on, on the Battle of Uhud, you know, where there were all these wounded Sahaba and, and there was just a little water to go around. And, you know, they were passing around the same cup and saying, no, no, you have it, you have it, until it came back to the first person again. No, no one had actually drunk it. <laughs> you know, that, that was really how much they preferred each other to themselves. It, it, can, it can go a little bit haywire. There's one time uh, I was in Egypt, and you find people wanting to pay for each other's metro fare, and they were almost fighting over the right to pay for the others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it can get ridiculous. Sometimes it gets a bit, <laughs> can get a bit silly. So you just take it in moderation. Of that. But, uh, alhamdulillah, this is this is uh, you know people people make their mistakes. But anyway, that, it's very nice. It's a very nice choice of verse, and I, I noticed you have it on your your status there as well as, uh, on WhatsApp. Um, oh. It's uh, a, a big. Uh, it's clearly an important verse in, 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 in your life and it's had an important impact on you. So alhamdulillah, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Well, very great pleasure to speak with you, especially on this special time of the day of Yom Juma, you know, between Asra and Maghrib, it's a Indeed. time of knowledge and a time when doers are answered. Alhamdulillah. So, so um, may Allah um, increase us in knowledge and increase us in reflection. Alhamdulillah. Increase us alhamdulillah. in the benefits of Ramadan especially. Okay, so uh, well, I think we'll draw it to a close there uh, in terms of our recording. So we'll... we'll, we'll Thank you for attending and uh, your wonderful thoughts and insights. And inshallah, we'll meet again sometime. And hopefully people will be inspired by this and uh, will check out more of the other videos we'll be producing uh, for uh, this, my chosen verse series. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Bismillah. Thank you so much. Nasa'ala.